<laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to the very first episode of Responsible Gambling. Um, today, I'm going to be going over some things that I spoke about during the week, as well as just my tips for this week's round of NRL, which is round 22. So, the reason why I started doing this was essentially um, doing a lot of videos on TikTok and stuff like that, and it really did blow up. Like, I'm actually, I've sent the, um, the analytics to... Um, my friend that actually works at Channel 9, and they actually said that uh, I was actually getting more views than, um, than their page, at the, uh, their sports page um, at the time, when they've got 50,000 followers sort of thing. So up to nearly 2 million views over um, essentially three weeks, and some of the videos with well over 100,000 views sort of thing. So I just thought, but obviously in the comments getting slaughtered sometimes just because it's hard to get your point across in like 60 seconds and I don't want to make really, really long videos sort of thing, so I want to keep them a little bit shorter um, sort of thing. So I guess on this I can talk about what I've said and sort of explain it a bit more length, go over my tips for the week, and then also what I'll be doing is tomorrow, so I'll do my actual bets for the week, and I'll put those up as well. So I'll probably um, I'll do this video tonight. I'm just doing this as like a dry run. I'll put it up, see how it goes. And then tomorrow I'll actually put my um, put my multis up and my tips for the week um, for NRL. And if there is UFC on, NBA as well. I love gambling that too. So I'll put all that sort of stuff up as well. But first things first, let's just... This this post blew up. So I just, I just have to chat about it for a minute before we get into the tips for the week. But the pain has been overrated one. Now, where is it? Okay, so we're up to 95,000 views so far. Um, absolutely insane. I think the um, the watch time on this thing was crazy. It was something like 6,000 hours of watch time sort of thing. So essentially what I said was Payne Haas is overrated. Now, just remember, guys, overrated means people rate them really highly, and I don't think they're rated that high. So I always say... I. Um, I've always said, you know, like I actually think Payne Haas is a good prop. In fact, he could be one of the best props, but I just don't think he is now. 900 hours of watch time on that video. <laughs> it's crazy. And um, some people absolutely blowing up about how wrong it was and other people saying, you know what, you're right. He's... And then, um, so let's go through some of these comments and I can address them sort of thing. And uh, and uh, cause these comments crack me up, man. Like seriously, like... Absolutely crap me up. Some are funny, some are like just fuck crazy, some I can't say on camera. You know, I'm not going to delete them, I don't care. Um, it's all about momentum, you just can't look at the stat sheet. I know. Um, what a joke, Haas was not very good last night, but he's not play he doesn't play like that all the time. He's the best ball runner in the comp by an absolute large margin. Um, I'd disagree. I'd say the best ball runner would be Jason Tamalolo, and he has been for about 10 years. When Jason got a million dollars a year, no one even said boo. This guy's getting 800000 and people are saying he's overpaid. So I think uh, most people would agree with me there that he's definitely not the best ball runner in the game. Um, what else we got? I also said in this post that um, I think Suwali's much better player than Cobo. That was a bit harsh. I didn't mean to rip on Cobo. I think Cobo is a really cool kid. I think he's got a really bright future. But I just think I'm, Suwali is just on another planet. And I was just more trying to make the point of how good Suwali is for an 18-year-old rather than saying that Cobo sucks. I didn't actually mean that Cobo sucks. I was just saying, I think, um, I think, man, I, I haven't seen a kid like Suwali for a very long time. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, okay, so you like Fisher Harris, but not Haas. They play the, the exact same, the exact same style, except Haas has more meters and offloads. They don't play the same style. Fisher Harris will blast you for about twenty minutes and have to go off, but he is the hardest working man on the field. Whenever he's on the field, the VB hard X index, or whatever it is, I know it's not a real stat, guys, but he's always at the top. He is a machine. Fisher Harris, I'm telling you now, every time he is ill on the field, I'm not saying he's the best prop, but he's the hardest working prop. And therefore, if I was putting two a team together, I want the hardest working props in my team, not necessarily the best ones. Okay, so um, they, I don't think they're the same style of player at all. I think they're completely different. <clears throat> all right, Swali is so much better, blah, blah, blah. Facts, Payne Haas. Um, 
not a fair comparison. Root, Roosters totally dominated and their line speed was far too good for the Broncos. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Payne Haas is awesome in, in games that don't matter. He sucks when there's when there is fast line speed. And that's literally what I said through this whole thing. And everyone's like, he just had a bad night. I'm like, no, every time the line speed's good, he's not very good. And, you know, it's just, and this is the thing, because he doesn't do anything wrong in the game, it doesn't really get highlighted. But I've been watching this kid. I remember so I remember this. Um I remember his debut. I remember watching it. I was like, damn, that's a big ass dude. And I was like, and then um watching him play, I was like, damn, for an eighteen year old or I think I think pretty sure it was eighteen when he debuted. I was like, he's pretty pretty good. But then like three games in, they're saying he's the best prop in the comp. I'm like, bro, he's played like the Tigers in the night, so I settled down. And then um Four, five, six games, they were, were literally saying it's the best game. And then event they played the Knights, who at the time were actually pretty good. So, um, sorry. So, yeah, they hadn't played the Knights yet, but they played the Knights, and then he came up against Clemmer, who probably was the informed prop of the year. And Clemmer knocked him out on his second hitter. It was, you know, and then I, from that point on, I noticed. I just watched him in every big game. Like, he, he didn't play bad. He just didn't step up. Like, you need those big players to step up. And um, I just noticed he faded in the big games. But he did enough to not to fly under the radar that he did nothing, if that makes sense. And so, oh, well, he cracked 100 metres, so it's good. You know, but he didn't, like, yeah. So that that's sort of where, where I'm sort of getting with that. And you need your big props to step up in these games, not for it to disappear. Um, Payne, Payne Haas has had an off game last night, relax. So I actually said this before that game on the weekend, and then he had a bad game. So clearly I already had this opinion, so he's clearly had multiple bad games. This wasn't his first bad game. And again, it wasn't even a bad game. It was just and an, an not much game. I'd love to see this bloke on the field. I don't play anymore, brother. Um, okay, here we go. To be honest, he runs a lot of metres, and isn't that exactly what you want? The line speed was too good for him. Again, exactly. These, these people just proving my point. Um, Payne Haas is the only player in the Broncos that does anything. I disagree. I think the Broncos have a lot of really good players. Um... He said that Haas ran seven. Um, he said there were seven Roosters players that ran more meters than Haas. Yeah, there was. <laughs> some of these comments crack me up, eh? I'm not going. Some people agree with me on here. Do you stand that Junior Paulo is the best front rower in the game? I think he has the potential to be the best front rower in the game. Sometimes he has a game, and I'm like, yeah, he's the best. And then he will have two games where he's just really good, and then he'll have a, a bad game, and then we'll have a game where he looks like the best again. Um. I swear Cobo took another head knock last night. He looked totally different after the tackle. I noticed that too. Um, he obviously got KO'd, like out cold, like stiff cold um, in origin and then had to have a couple of weeks off. So that means it's bad. Um, that means it was a bad KO. Um, and then um, he took, I can't remember exactly what the shot was, but he took a shot where, I think it was just one of those ones where it was this heavy shoulder to shoulder contact but his head like did, you know, like did the gook. And it just looked like one of those big tackles. But if, when you're coming off being like flatlined, it can sort of shake you up a little bit. So to me, you guys let me know, did Cobo look off to you guys as well? Because I thought he looked off because, um, yeah, he did not look, he didn't look bad. Again, he looked, he did his job, but he looked a little off. And then there was a couple of little times he sort of reached for the ball and, pull his hands in and out, and I just noticed he didn't look like his normal self. But who knows, maybe he just had his first big, um, you know, his first setback sort of thing, I guess you could say. He's been riding this big cloud up, you know, cloud nine sort of trail for a while. Uh, Payne Haas was never anything special. I completely agree with you, brother. If I had the effort, I'd make exactly the same video. <laughs> um, um, what's this one? If anyone that plays NRL Fantasy knows that Payne Haas is the best. That's the thing. Payne Haas does fill the stat sheet, and I've always said that, and it's not bad, but you can't ask for a million year. Um, I, I, it's a funny thing about I've never played the whole fantasy thing, but I remember um, a few of my boys were into it at one point in time, and they always I used to always piss me. They'd always pick Corey Parker and stuff in their teams because he'd run along the line like fending, and it did nothing. Like Broncos would get pumped by 40, but the stat sheet read like, 14 tackle busts and you know like all this and then he would like ditch it out the back so be an offload and he'd get all these stats but literally did nothing to help the team you know so 
Um, just so you know, fantasy fantasy stats aren't real, you know, like, and that's whenever I'm doing, like, where I think someone's rated or under, underrated or overrated, you can't go just off your eye test and you can't go just off stats. You sort of have to mix the two. And there's so much personal opinion in it as well. Um, you know, like, I'm not right here. And the person that's telling me I'm wrong is not right either. It's just all opinion. Um, he didn't want to hurt his future teammates. That's hilarious. I reckon he might end up at the Roosters as well. Um, who else we got? He's definitely been struggling lately. I'm a Bronx fan and I totally agree with you. Haas is totally overrated, but I think you're talking trash about Cobbo. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to talk trash about Cobbo. I shouldn't rip on him. Um, what else we got? Wait, did Haas, Payne Haas play? <laughs> uh, when did Kurt Catewell get on the gear? Man, I, I'm getting that a lot, hey. So, funny story. I actually got... Um, Got yanked by the cops today, just walking in my... I was just literally walking back from the gym. And um, I live in a really nice area. I don't fit in. So, um, yeah, so, for example, Jenna Reinhardt is like one door down from me. Um, you know, I've got the worst house on the block and it's worth about $4 million. And um, I, a, a cop just pulled out of the drive and I stepped out of the driveway, saw me, he goes, hey, come here, mate. And then he looked at me and he goes, good idea. I'm like, nah. And he's, then um, they sort of walked to and said something to each other and he came back and he's like, do you play footy? I'm like, do you think I'm good okay? Well, he's like, yeah. I'm like, nah, not me. So, we, I don't think I look like him at all, but um, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Like everyone's saying it, either that or Isaiah Yo, and even the coppers today thought I was bloody Kurt Capewell. It was pretty funny. I cracked up. And, uh, okay, Broncos, Broncos are playing like they don't want to make the top eight. Yeah, totally agree with you. He's definitely not worth a million. Man, I didn't actually think um, so many people were agreeing with me. I didn't. I haven't read. I've read the comments. Like I put the video up, read the comments for about there was hundred of them within ten minutes, and I was like, everyone was like sort of slaughtering me, going, "Oh man, like what are you talking about?" You know, blah blah blah. But um, looks like a lot of people actually agree with me here, you know, eh? That he is pretty much the most overrated team um, prop. Um, so do you think he should be selected for the Australian World Cup team? Ooh, that's. Um, Actually, you said World Cup squad. Squad, 100%. You'd have him in the squad. Um, you know, but I wouldn't... wouldn't be, yeah, I don't... I think that... To be honest, I'd rather... Uh, I, don't, I actually don't know. Is Junior Paulo playing for Samoa? I'd probably pick him and... Jeez, I don't know. Most good props are Kiwis and Samoans. <laughs> yeah, jeez, it might be tough to get in the front row together. Um, if you watch the game, Roosters had more of the ball. Broncos... Broncos had way too many errors. Actually, errors were quite even, and also it was 51 to 49%. Um, the, it was actually extremely even possession, so that's definitely wrong. Um, Suwali is way better than Cobo. Okay. Uh, Cobo should be in the Queensland Cup. Um, you've got no idea, bros. There, we found some negative ones. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I'd hate to see what you think of Aaron Woods. Well, this is the thing. No one rates Aaron Woods. Everyone knows Aaron Woods is average. People were like, oh, but Aaron Woods made Origin. Do you know how bad New South Wales front rowers were at the time? Like, he was all we had. Or they had. Um, all those post-contact meters are useless without a really good offload. Uh, the problem is the Broncos have no second-phase freestyle pay. Um, sort of agree. They're not... You know, post contact. You'd rather post contact meet. They're not useless. You'd rather post contact meters than not have post contact meters. But you're right. Like you have to at least, if you're making like eight nine post contact meters, like maybe every second or third time, like shoot an offload, or you just can't never throw one. You know, like yeah, I think some people offload way too much, but um, he never seems to throw them. He always throws before the line or hits the line and just like walks and then falls down slowly. All right, I don't want to read too many of these actually anymore because um, they're all, everyone's just sort of agreeing with me, um, which sort of sucks. I thought I was thought I was going to be reading out funny things with people like ripping on me and stuff, saying how shit I am, but like everyone's just like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he said he, he he's a solid ball runner. He's been playing injured most of this season. He's got an AC problem. Um, AC joints, they don't actually, it doesn't really hurt you playing footy. Um, I've had a couple AC joints. Well, this is this is my experience with them. And my best mate had one too. And 
and um, he had real bad one. He had to actually had to have the surgery, like pain does. To me, it just feels like someone's like pushing their thumb like into your thing. It's not like bad. Like you can just play through it. So I, I don't really like everyone's like he's a hero. He's playing with a bung shoulder. It doesn't actually hurt to tackle or to run with the ball. It's more like if you like reach up to like you know look through your your clothing. Your, that that sort of hurts. It's like the pinching angles and stuff. It's it's not like oh man, I have to make this tackle. It's gonna hurt. So. Um, everyone's at making him out like he's some hero for playing with a sore AC. It's, it's not that bad, trust me. I've had AC joint injuries my whole life. This guy's joking. Yeah, sweet. Flegler was a beat. Flegler was better. Um, facts, man. Spot on the money. I agree with you. Come on, man. Someone be mean. You look like Isaiah Yo. <laughs> Fair points. Facts. Facts. Wow. Because he wants out. Yeah, he looks like he's not totally in there. Who do you think are the best props in the comp? It's so hard to pick the best prop in the comp because it's sort of like someone can be the best prop for like four or five weeks and then they can like sort of go quiet and just do their job. If I had to pick one, I'd probably just pick the Penrith front row, um, to be honest. Um, Junior Paula, I think, has got the best talent. Um, RCG has some nights, but, you know, you know, oh, damn, some good ones, man. But it's, it's tough. But I'd say those... I think the Penrith and the Parramatta start in front row is probably the most lethal start in front row out of the just say club level, um, you know, before splitting people up. But if I had to pick who had the best front row in the game, I'd say, yeah, Parramatta and Penrith. And then, like, sometimes Solomon looks like he's the best prop in the game. And then sometimes, you know, I'm not Kenny Bromwich, not the Bromwich brothers um, anymore, really. But, you know, like, it's just, it sort of rotates around. It's really hard. It's not like... When Jonathan Thurston was a half, like he was the best half. And, you know, when Lockie was playing, he was the best. You know, it's a prop sort of like, they go through phases. Um, Haas is a top three prop. Definitely not. I don't think he's top five. Um, but could be he could be the best prop in the game. And this is the problem. Okay, so I'm not going to go into this anymore. Um, he carries that forward pack. He's been carrying that forward pack for the last three years. He carried them to two wooden spoons pretty much. Didn't care much else. Okay, so this is the problem with what I have actually have with um with him. It's not so much Haas's problem, and I've, I couldn't find any comments. But this is what a lot of people said: he's got the biggest motor. He can play eighty minutes. Like name another prop that can play eighty minutes. Name another prop that can run so many meters and this. So every prop, if they played full minutes, would have close to his numbers. Okay, just just they just would. The problem is you don't want to play your props meant to go on blast get off you've got eight exchanges uh, interchanges well you're meant to use them your props not meant to play 80 minutes think about this for a second why would you want your best player and prop exhausted at the end of the game it's fucking stupid you start the game he starts the game he's completely null and void because everyone's fresh he goes pretty good for a little bit, and then he gets tired, and then what? when the game's on the line in the last 20 minutes, he's completely exhausted. It's stupid. Put him on, run it, tell him, hey, man, run hell for leather, blast everyone, and I'll get you off for 20 minutes. He doesn't need to play. It's To me, Haas being like overrated is actually Kev's fault. I actually think Kev's a pretty putrid coach as well. I don't think he's actually very good, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But... Um, yeah, well, it is sort of going to depend on how he handles the rest of the year because I think he's going to... Broncos don't look good, man. Broncos are massively better from last year, but Broncos should be good. They're the only team in Brisbane. They've got a massive pool of youth to come through. They've got all the money in the world. If Broncos aren't in the top eight, they've failed. I mean, sorry, if Broncos aren't in the top four for me, they're a failure. Why are they not in the top four every year? They've got every junior in the state to pick from, pretty much. They've got endless money. They've got all the allure of being, you know, like all the greats there. It's just, if they're, I don't know, people act like they've like done something great this year. To me, they haven't done anything great yet. And don't think I'm a Broncos hater. Me, personally, I think the NRL is better when Broncos are at the top. Not When I say at the top, I don't mean winning. I just, I mean, like, winning the comp. I just mean, like, just... Just a really good team. Like, it's always exciting when there's a big full house. Broncos are killing it. And, like, Melbourne come to town. Or the Cowboys come to town when they were good. And, you know, or whoever. When Penrith come. That's, I want that. I really actually want that. And um, so I'm not hating the Broncos. I'm just, I have high expectations of them. And I have high standards of them. And I want them to be really good. I don't want them to fucking 
flounder around and will they make the eight? And yeah, they did pretty good this year. Don't want none of that. That's that's rubbish. So um, we're going to see what Kevy's made of in the next few weeks. Um, so man, there's a few teams coming up behind them that look much better than they do. You know, they might just get bounced out first round of the finals. Chance they might have not made the eight. Long shot, but never know. All right, so let's let's not get into this one too much more. Um, here, I'll read one more. Um, I wouldn't say it's an overrated prop. Playing plays on both sides of the ball. He averages 30 tackles a game and 158 metres as well. Again, I 100% agree, but just about every prop in the game would if they played 80 minutes. Junior Paulo can play 80 minutes. I'm pretty sure he'd rack up pretty similar numbers. Probably not as many tackles, but close. Get just as many metres. Like, like um, Junior Paulo gets those metres, 158 metres. Averages at 158 metres. Junior Paulo gets that in, in 45 minutes um, sort of thing. So most like, not any prop, most good props will get those numbers every game if they manage their energy and just just stat pad and um, play the whole game. It's not what they're meant. Props aren't meant to conserve energy. and fun. They're meant to smash, punch holes, bend lines back. You can't do that when you're playing the whole game. And that's that's the problem. All right, let's go. Round 22. Let's do some betting. All right, so I put a multi up the other day. Um, let's have a look at it, actually. What did I pick? Um, I haven't picked this one, but I've gone... Um, gee, man, this is sound like I'm going to be a Broncos hater, but um, I'm really not. It's actually paying 129000 to one, this one. Um, sorry, it's not 129000 to one. Uh, <laughs> if I put a 1000 bucks on, it was paying 129000 Um So, it's essentially... So let's go through it. All right, cool. So uh, screw the multi. I'm going to do my multi tomorrow. So keep an eye on that for one. I'll put it up on my TikTok and I'll put it up in here as well. I usually do other bets too. My multis are more just for fun. Okay, so don't think I'm, um, don't think I'm, um, you know, that's the only bet I'll put on for the week. I put tons of bets on, but, and they're more the ones I'm trying to make money off. My multi is just more for fun. Like if it comes through, it's like, ooh, 100, 129 grand. Good weekend. Mm. Okay, so the more and more I look at this game, this round sucks, man. This round is so hard to pick. So we've got Penny Panthers, Melbourne Storm. Now, I, looked, I just looked at the team list. Oh, this round sucks, man. I'm going to get everything wrong. Do not take my tips this week, all right? Do not. So Fisher-Harris is out, which is massive news and no one's talking about it. Moses Leota's there. Kickout's still out. And they're still missing their halves. Man. And Melbourne are paying two bucks fifty. Oh man. Okay. This is so hard. Who you guys got? Who you guys got? Okay, it's in Penrith. I'm gonna have I'd say Penrith should win this. And again, stay tuned for my multi tomorrow. I'll have a bit more of a think of this, but I'm just going to do my tips. Penrith to win, okay? And they're paying a dollar fifty-five. The line's four fifty, a uh, four, <laughs> four and a half. All right. Met on Friday. Warriors Canterbury Bulldogs again. That's a hard game. It's in New Zealand. Canterbury are playing good, but they're not like they're still not polished at all. Like they're not polished at all. The line's four and a half again. Canterbury Bulldogs are playing dollar forty-five, and the New Zealand Warriors are playing two forty-five. New Zealand Warriors last week was so putridly bad. I was actually embarrassed for the Kiwi fans. Um, they deserve better than that. Um, a few of their forwards really stood up. Um, can't remember the guy with the big afro. He was sick. But Sean Johnson, man, he needs a boot up the arse. Hey, that was a putrid performance, man. I can't. You're on eight hundred thousand dollars a year, like. Stop kicking the ball dead every time. You suck, man. Like, Sean Johnson is so talented. He's on 800k a year, and he's just playing shit footy. Like, he's he should fucking hang his head in shame. He should be dropped for the rest of the year and just be like, mate, you're not coming back. You know what I mean? Like, or if he had any pride, he would take a pay cut next year so they can bring a, another good, talented kid over because what he's done this year has been fucking putrid. Like, he's so shit. Like, um, yeah, I'm not happy with him at all. Hey, I've watched the last three or four Warriors games I've watched. Kicking the ball out in the full, just kicking it dead every time. Like, he's not making tons of errors, but, like, 
you you you're on eight hundred k a year, man. Like, do something good. Like, your Fords are so under the pump, and then you just boot it dead. Oh, it pisses me off. And I actually love Sean Johnson. He's just I've just the last few games I've watched of his. He's been shit all year, but the last few games I've actually sat there and watched the Warriors games, and I'm like, how's this dude in the NRL? And then how is he getting paid eight hundred a year? So bad. I'd be so embarrassed if I was him. And then we've got this other hard game, Parramatta, South Sydney. Let's have a look at the team list. Is Mitch Moses been named? So Mitch Moses apparently has his finger is healing way better than they thought. So Jacob Arthur, Jake Arthur, has been named. He looked really good. And actually, I actually sort of like Moses out. Obviously, Moses is a better half than Jake Arthur, but Dylan Brown, the more he touches the ball... He's a freak, man. That kid, like, well, he appears to be a freak. He's still young. Dylan Brown hasn't done anything yet to prove himself. But I'm actually liking that Moses is out because he's just going to get so much ball, so much confidence, and he can sort of run the show. And I think it's going to, um, I think it's going to be actually good for Parramatta in the end. But this is tough, man. The trail's looking good and strong. Um, teams are pretty much... Teams are the same, so no changes. 17 is named. This is both good, two good, strong teams going head to head. For me, this is the game of the round for me. Bunnies, Rabbitohs, who you got? All right. The line's three and a half. Parramatta have won their last two games. They're paying two bucks 40. South Sydney are playing. This is a comeback stadium, too, in Parramatta. Man, this is a hard round. Just, I'm just, I'm just going Parramatta, but just for the price, like two forty five. That's such a good price for a team. That's, I mean, all they have to do is really shut down Trell Mitt. You know what I mean? And then there's, there's not much else going on there. I mean, Johnson's amazing, obviously, but he has to get the ball. If the rest of the team's not doing anything, he can't exactly score. So, yeah, jeez. But I like the price of Parramatta, two forty five. Um, this, this is the thing. Like. Bunnies could win this by 20. Parramatta could win this by 20. This could be a golden point game. This could be decided in the last second. Parramatta are the hardest team to bet, for, bet with, man. Oh, man. Parramatta. And then another, this game's hard too, man. Sydney Roosters, North Queensland Cowboys. I'm not super impressed with the Cowboys at the moment, but they keep winning. It's just they just keep winning. I know they cheated once, but they just keep winning. But I think the Roosters have more strike power and technically are a better team, so I'm going to go the Roosters in that one, especially at being in Sydney. Cowboys have been good away from home this year, so um, who knows there. All right, West Tigers, Sharkies. Sharkies will get that one done. And then we've got Brisbane Broncos, Knights. Okay, so the Lions 17-1. to So I've got to see the team list first. Now there's chats that Ponga might play as well. Mm -mm. Tex Hoy's been named. Okay, they are like this is a good team. Newcastle's got a good team on paper. Like, look at their front. David Clemmer, Jalen Bra Jaden Bradley, Braley, Daniel Safedi, Frizzell, Brody Jones, Matt. Cr it's a good front. That's. They got a good team. Like, why are they so bad? Even with Ponga, they were so bad. But this is my one. This is one I'm. This is going to juice up my multi, and I'm not too sure about. What I'll probably do is I'll probably obviously Pat Broncos should win this. I'm not. I'm gonna, if I don't say that, I'm going to sound the biggest Broncos hater of all time, and it's just not true. But I think um, I just have a feeling the Knights might be able to get them. You know, so I'm thinking I might go. Um, I might even do a, might even just put a bet on Newcastle to win that one. Might just a side bet a few grand or something. See how we go. All right, now we've got Canberra versus St George. This again, I don't care what anyone says. This is tough because they're both like whichever. This is a whoever wins this, or sorry, whoever loses this is done. Like there's no way you, neither of these teams are making the eight if they don't win this weekend. So this is literally do or die. I said last week. 
that last week pretty much was, and it pretty much was. But to me, um, St. George looked awful last week. Ben Hunt just sucked it up. He looked fucking terrible. Um, and Raiders weren't great either, but Raiders had a lot of punch. They had a lot of good stuff going for them. They just lacked a little bit of polish. Jack White's not a six. I don't care what anyone says. He's a centre, fullback, lock. He's not a he's not a six. I don't care what anyone says. Um, you know that Penrith had two of their best players, three of their best players out. They had a man in the sim bin, which was Fisher Harris. They were down to twelve men. They had all this ball in the right areas, and he couldn't come up with a little play to to break the line. God, God, man, that's what you get paid for, bro. That's literally your job, playmaker. But bro. Yeah, he was, well, Jack White was, yeah, not good, eh? He was, um, yeah, like I, I love him at centre, but I do not rate him at all in the in the six, eh? And I know everyone goes, oh, he's won the Dally M at six. Just because he won one didn't win, he deserved to win one. To me, he's not a six. He's not a six. And then we've got Gold Coast Titans, man. This is actually a pretty hard game. Like, tw- this is on the Gold Coast. Manly are not great. I think... How's the, can that can Manly still make it? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, they just they don't look great. I don't know. It's just they just they're just missing Turbo. Oh, can't find it. It's all good. Um, they're just missing Turbo. It's just it's just hard hard without him. But um, in that one, I'm going to go Manly just because. Talking about putrid, I mean, okay, so we're talking about paying hearts before. Do you want to see what happens when you pay a Ford a million dollars a year and you've got no money to spend on anyone else? Have a look at the Gold Coast Titans. They got David for feeder. David for feeder is just as destructive, if not more destructive, than paying hearts because at least David for feeder at least tries to pull through the line. David for feeder is a, he's a problem. Like, a few people in the comments were like, oh, I'd love to see you run at a. Uh, you know, uh, I'd love to see um, you tackle for paying half. I'm like, happily, you know what I mean? He, he'll probably hit me spin and I'll just slide down and drag him down slowly. I do not want to tackle Dave Fafita. That dude's a monster. That dude's scary, you know? So, um, yeah, that, he runs with force, you know what I mean? Where Payne Haas sort of punt, well, he's got beautiful late footwork and he'll punch a little, he'll punch in between players and then just walk sort of thing. He's not, he doesn't like clutch your head. Like, I've, I've, I've never seen Payne Haas snap anyone's head back and watch them fall on the ground. Like, for how big Payne Haas is, he should be creating a HIA every game. You know, people should be going off the field trying to tackle that guy. I've never seen anyone come off from a head injury from trying to tackle Payne Haas ever. So, you know what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, that's um, that's what I'm saying. But you just, you can't, ha- like, you don't have a huge amount of money to spend. You can't spend an eighth of it on a, four, on a Ford when all he does is run. It's um, you know, like look, look how like Gold Coast teams like it's just it's it sucks, man. They spent all their money on two Fords, and they're both sick. Like Dave, everyone, everyone says Dave for feed is overrated. He's overpaid. Dave for feed is a problem. He's a real problem. But you can't have Tino and Dave for feed getting half your team salary. You know. I read the rest of it. I can't even. I don't even know half the. Obviously, I know them, but like, who are these guys? These are cut players. They've put two of the best forwards in the game in their team, and then surrounded them with cut players. And that's and they think they're going to win games, and that's a problem. And that's what's going to happen to the Broncos, especially if they cave into pain and give him more money. Um, they're going to end up with a Q Cup team. Everyone's just going to go to the Dolphins over the next year or two, get paid more. They still live in Brisbane. Don't even have to change cities. You just drive down the highway. Yeah, so it's a tough one, man. But yeah, so I guess this pick here, yeah, I'll go see Eagles. But uh, but yeah, but stay tuned. I'll definitely I'll put my multi together. Um, I'll put it probably together late tonight. I have a bit of a read over these team lists and I'll um, I'll do a video probably about lunchtime and pop it up so everyone can see sort of things. So um, thank you all so much for watching guys. I'll um 
probably try and do these every week, every other week. I'll obviously make it way more professional. This is just one of my spare rooms. I've got a seven bedroom house. I've got all these spare rooms everywhere. I've got a solarium and stuff down there and for personal use, obviously. And then I've um, got some other bits and pieces, like just another spare room and stuff. So I was like, I may as well turn this one into, um, I've got a gaming room as well. So I was like, I may as well turn this one into like a pod room sort of thing. So I'll make it a bit more professional. I'll, I'll put lay this out a bit better. I'll, I'll just pretty much talk a bunch of shit, see what people like to hear about. And then I'll just concentrate it down into the shit people want to actually hear and um, keep chatting. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next.